What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to translate entire PDFs using LangChain, the OpenAI API, and some simple Python functions. So let's get started with that. The steps to do that are just, we're going to load the PDF, we're going to extract the text, we're going to translate it to using the JetPack API, and then we're going to export it to a PDF and save it. So to load, it's very simple in LangChain, you just have to call the document loader's uh, module, and the, we're not calling the module, we're loading from that module the PyPDF loader class, which allows us to load the PDF into these usable chunks, right? Which we're going to transform the PDF into these useful chunks using the load and split uh, method. So then we can inspect this PDF doc and you see it's a list of document objects which contain the contents of the PDF. And that's going to be useful for a lot of reasons. So we can actually get all the text contents by just doing a list comprehension over this list and calling the page content attribute from the document object, which is inside of that list with all of those that are inside of that list. And we can, in and then we can inspect, you know, the contents from the first document object, uh, the contents actually, and we see that's the title, the authors and the abstract, you see, that's great. So since we're going to be doing translation of big PDFs, it would be nice to know uh, the token size of the stuff that we're going to be trying to translate because we cannot send the entire PDF text to the ChatGPT API because we know there's a context length issue associated with calling these large language model APIs. So we're going to use the tick token package, which you can install by just running something like pip install all tick token. And uh, this allows us to calculate the number of tokens in a piece of text. So let's take a look at, at the size of the, um, uh, at the token size for the first uh, chunk of content that we have. That's 580 tokens. So that's great. That looks, that looks good for us. So we can run some fancy, some nice little statistics to calculate the average number of tokens in the pages of the PDF. So we can say, okay, so encode the page for each page in the content. And then uh, let's sum that up and divide it by the um, number of pages, right? Because that will give, that will give us the uh, uh, average size of tokens inside the ad, uh, list. And then we're going to get the minimum size and the, the total, okay? So we're going to get the max, the minimum, and the total. And then we can run that. And then as you guys can see, we are pretty good. The total number for the entire content is 7,632, which is pretty okay. And yeah, the max one is 1,179 and the minimum one is 100. So that's great. And we can estimate the price for translating the first PDF by just getting the total tokens and dividing that by 1,000 and then multiplying that by the price of calling the ChatGPT API, okay? And then we're summing up, yeah. And then we're summing up, um, and then we're summing up for the two. Uh, this is just because I was doing the, that's the size for the, yeah, that's the size. We can do just an estimation of the size like this. So that's pretty cheap. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting something off because it's the token input and the token output right so there's the so th it's not going to be 0 0.01 it's actually going to be that problem multiplied by two more or less just because uh the uh, inputs are going to have that token size but the translations will have a somewhat depending on the language but somewhat similar amount of tokens on the uh, output okay so to do that what we're going to do we're going to import OpenAI, and then we're going to write a function called get translation, which will contain a prompt. That's a very simple prompt where I'm just saying translate this page from English to Portuguese, output only the translation, not the original text, and the English version will contain the contents of that PDF page. And I'll, I'm saying your Portuguese, and then I'm asking for the output. Okay. So this is the call for the JGPT API. This is just the basic. ChatGPT API call. I do write a system message saying you're an expert translator from English to Portuguese books about all humanities topics. In this case, I'm going to say uh, to Portuguese, 
I'm going to say Portuguese pig because I was actually doing this for a friend. So I was doing for a specific use case, but now for English to Portuguese papers about machine learning. That's how we're going to change that. And now let's get the translation from the first page, just so that you guys get a sense for how this thing works. Okay. So I'm calling GPT 2.5 Turbo on the first page and getting that translation. Ah, there we go. So there we go. We get that translation wonderfully done. And uh, we're not going to inspect any specifically, but yeah, it looks pretty good. And now we can move on. Okay, so here is the part where we prepare the text content to, um, this is the core of our automation, okay? So we're gonna use these true packages, the FPDF to create the PDF and unit decode to format the strings so that they can be translated into something that is, that's acceptable by the PDF, okay? So the kit translations function is just gonna take in the pages with the content and then we're gonna do a loop and we're going to do a loop where we're going since because of the size of the pages, we're not going to do one page at a time for the translations because that's not as efficient uh, in comparison to just loop over a bigger chunk of pages so that we can do less calls to the ChatGPT API and therefore be more efficient. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm creating batches of content. Okay. I'm combining those pages together. I'm making sure here that they do not exceed the 4096 token context length. And then I am uh, running the translation. So I create a batch, combine the pages, and then I run the translation. Uh, I get that translation. And then what I do is from that translation, I run the dot split function so that we have a little bit of um, separation between the content so that they're like properly formatted and that's it. I do that in the loop. And if, if it's bigger, I have to do this, which is to reduce like in here, I'm actually accounting for the fact that it's like bigger than the context size. So you have to make it smaller and I'm doing a very silly, um, uh, a very silly thing where I'm just, uh, removing the last page and then for the fourth page. I am translating that aside and then combining them together. But when the combination of the four pages does not exceed the context length, I just call the get translation function on the entire content and I return the translations. That's this function. And I write a very simple create PDF function where I give the pages that were translated in a now put file path. And that will, this function here will just get all that content and create an entire PDF from that content and save it. So we can, ah, oh, we got to install FPDF. Apparently I don't have it. So let's organize all of our ink works and pip installs at the top. So we're going to put, yeah, we're going to put everything at the top. And then guys, don't worry because you will. I will make this uh, notebook available so that you guys can try it out. And uh, pi PDS loader. Uh, oh, sorry. Pi so now pip install uh, S P U S, and also pip install unid. Okay, perfect. So we've installed everything. Let's remove that output. Great. So we can come back here and now we can run this. Perfect. So now we have these functions ready to test. Let me remove that. That was just a test from before. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is, uh, and before I was doing this in parts because I was doing an entire book, but we don't have to do that anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, I'm just going to give it the content. Now let's remember what the content is by picking up the stuff that we did here. Exactly. And let's put it all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this in here. I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to put it here. Beautiful. And then I can just go back here. Yes. And now just so that you guys see the entire thing happening, all we got to do now is load the PDF, uh, get the contents from that PDF, translate it, create the PDF, create a new PDF, right? Create the, the one that's with the translated content and that's it. So I'm going to give the guns paper. I'm going to give the file, uh, the output file should be guns, uh, guns paper. Translated. Since I already have 
this thing is done, I already have the content, as you guys can see here. Look, I already have all of this content in um, in English. We're not going to run that again so that we don't waste anyone's time. And we're going to translate and create the PDF. So we had an issue. Not supported between is a list and integer. Content. Okay. So content. So let's add this to a test. So for C in content, that prints like. These are all strings, so there's some issue with the pages because it was supposed to be, let's see, get translations, it's here. Translations, pages, for E in, zero length pages, pages, this, if combined pages, bigger than this. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. What's the, what's the issue? Hmm, let's put is a list in int, get translations, combine pages, bigger than, okay, so combine pages is a, is not a string apparently, combine pages, combine pages, why not? Ah, I see, because this thing was for the, yeah, okay, so because this thing was done for a book, now, when I try a paper, it's giving me some issues. So here's what we're going to do. Now, there's not going to be batches. We're going to do page by page. Or, no, even better. We're going to do one plus two. One plus two. And then one plus, one plus I plus three. I plus one. Great. And still not supported. That's annoying. Okay, so here's what we're going to do then. We're going to just loop over and get just the pages one by one. We're just going to do get translation. Yeah, exactly. For each page. And the combined pages are just going to be exactly that. And we're not going to check. I'm going to remove the check for the context length because we're not going to need it in this case. But let's just print combined pages before, just so that we see what mistake are we getting. Okay, so that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. What's the issue? Uh, list and integer. Okay, something is being mistaken as a list inside this function. We're going to find out what it is. And we're going to do that by just... Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just say pages. Ah, so combined pages is just going to be one single page now. This way we know that we're not going to have any issues. And that's it. And we can just, exactly. And we can just say something like this, but that's not going to happen. So we're going to remove this part. Yeah, we're going to remove this part for now. And we're just going to have combined pages, which is going to be pages I, or even better, forget about combined pages because they're not combined anymore. We're going to just say pages. This way we get past, bypass that issue because we're doing just for papers. We got invalid request because it was 4,097, but your mess resulted in 8,000. Because we're doing the entire thing, which should not be, ah, yeah, of course. Because we're saying, okay, so let's use combined pages. We're going to say combined pages. Is it going to pages? Yeah, pages I plus pages I plus one. Exactly. And still giving some issues. Okay, so let's go back to what we had before. And let's just fix what we had before. We're just going to say, okay, batches are going to be what? Are going to be I to I plus one. And uh, same thing here. So I to I plus one. Exactly. Batches I to I plus one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ah, and then here it will be, um, here we will go, yeah, 
Let's see if now it works. Now it's still giving me that issue. It's a string, but he's saying not support between list and integer. So that's probably because inside that string, there's something that looks like a list. So that, that's got to be the only explanation for that. So what are we going to do about that? We are going to replace. We are going to combine pages, equal combine pages dot replace. There we go. We're going to remove the things that were being mistaken by lists. Well, nevertheless, still giving me some annoyances. So let's just return this combine page. No, let's just say print combine pages. Let's see. So for this output stream, I'm going to put that into ChatGPT to see if it has a better idea. For this output stream, I am getting this error when I'm trying to run this. Now I'm going to show the code that I'm running, which is right here. This is the line that matters. Let's see if ChatGPT has a good input. The error in college is due to compare this an integer. When you do this, it seems that your encode returns a list. You can directly compare a list. Ah, of course, because it has to be the length of that list. It has to be, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It has to be the length of that list. It has nothing to do with any of this. Exactly. There we go, guys. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Now we're going page by page. And that's going to take a while. So OK, perfect. So now we've finished translating the PDF. And now what we can do is take a look to see if our output looks good. So we can come here and we can say, OK, guns, paper, translated. And there we go. I mean, it looks pretty good. So we have the abstract, we have the introduction, we have the entire paper translated. I mean, the equations give some issues and have things like that. So that's something to improve. And yeah, for scientific machine learning type papers, we would encounter these issues, but at least the content is completely translated, which I think is pretty cool. And of course, we would be able to evolve this into something more interesting if we work tomorrow or uh, making sure that the equation stuff, maybe we can do some prompt engineering to make sure that the equations and all that get um, organized separately. But yeah, as a simple tool for like simple pieces of text or small papers, if you want to just translate it all and you don't mind that the format looks a little bit weird when you have a bunch of equations in the middle, yeah, this is a pretty cool tool to have. So I'll make sure to leave something available for you guys to check out and play around with this code. Uh, don't forget that there's a cost and you have to have your API set up. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Cheers.